Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm excited to be interviewing Lisa Jaster. Lisa is an engineer, leader, executive coach, keynote speaker, and a U.S. Army officer. She is a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and was one of the first three women to graduate from the elite Army Ranger School. She served both active duty and with the U.S. Army Reserve in various command roles and on deployments to Iraq and to Afghanistan. She recently released her book, Delete the Objective, A Soldier's Adventures in Ranger School, to encourage people to break outside the boxes or labels given to them by society. Let's tune in and learn more about her inspiring story. What were your early years like as a child, as an adolescent? How soon did you know that you wanted to go into the military? You know, Dave, I had a very blessed childhood growing up in a small town in Wisconsin, raised by a single mom, very Christian community, very community-based community, where if I did something wrong and mom wasn't there to yell at me, don't worry, the neighbors would call mom and let her know. So, you know, there was no, we might have been latchkey kids at times, but there was no getting away with murder. And so what ended up happening, the second part of your question is what drove me to the military was actually the first Gulf War. Seeing the the soldiers specifically on TV made me think of, you know, these aren't men and women pretending to be heroes. These are men and women that at a moment's notice picked up, left their families and are out there sacrificing. And at that time I was in sixth, seventh grade, I think I thought, OK, these are these are real world heroes, not actors, not musicians, not not famous people, just people willing to sacrifice their life for people they don't know. Shortly after that, Lisa's grandmother sent her a book written by Carol Barclow titled In the Men's House. In the book, Carol shared entries from her journals chronicling her experience as one of the first women graduates from West Point. Her story captivated Lisa. After that, she knew what she wanted to do one day. My father's a West Point grad. So at seventh grade, I decided, hey, I'm, I'm going to go to West Point. I'm going to join the Army, and I'm going to be one of these real-world superheroes that wear combat boots instead of capes. Lisa was accepted to West Point, and in 2000, she was commissioned as a U.S. Army engineer. Following her graduation, she was deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. I wanted to know what she learned about herself during combat missions and as she moved up the ranks in leadership. I think the biggest thing I learned as I ascended the leadership ranks, as well as being in those austere environments, was I had to be true to myself, but I needed to speak to the audience in ways that the audience could hear me. And what I mean by that is sometimes I have to be a mom connecting with other parents, men and women that have children. Sometimes I have to be that hardcore George S. Patton type leader that says, listen, I just need you to suck it up, buttercup, and drive on. And sometimes I need to be that athlete who understands, hey, listen, I know what you're sacrificing here. All of those are authentic versions of myself, but not all of them connect with the soldiers I'm trying to lead or the people I'm trying to communicate with at the same time. In 2015, the U.S. military changed the rules, affording women the opportunity to pursue combat roles. Many critics worried that women wouldn't be able to maintain the physical standards these roles required. At the age of 37, and as a mother of two, Lisa decided to step away from her job to enroll in the Army Ranger School. I wanted to find out what her motivation was to take on such a challenging task. As someone who serves, you understand what is how important our sergeant majors are to us. Senior enlisted advisor plus the man of my dreams, my husband, both worked hard to coerce me into going into ranger school. And my husband actually used a couple phrases that still stick with me today, even though it's been eight years. And that was Einstein said a ship is safest at the shore, but that's not what it was built for or a version of that. Uh, and that's not a direct quote. My husband just said, you you were built for this. You know, you left active duty, you've served, you've gone to West Point. You have a support team that most 22-year-olds don't. You know, being 15 years senior meant I had 
a wonderful husband, a great job to come home to, some security in life that my peers didn't have. So, you know, by Alan, my husband saying, you were built for this, it made the decision a little bit easier for me. And of course, having someone, the person who was going to be hurt the most by me leaving for an extended period of time and being unavailable as a parent, as a spouse, as a employee, because of course I had to leave my job at Shell Oil Company at the time to go to Ranger School. There was a huge impact both emotionally, financially, and, you know, just just physically. You know, who's going to cook and clean and take care of half the chores at, at the house while I'm gone? And having him, that person who was going to be hurt the worst by me being gone, saying, hey, you need to do this, was extremely helpful and really pushed me down that path. In 2015, Lisa became one of the first three women to graduate from the U.S. Army Ranger program. For six months, she slept on the same forest ground as her peers, typically 23-year-old man on active duty. She ran the same mock missions and battle drills and graduated the course. Yet today, there are still some critics of women in specialized military roles. I think those people are not understanding the message. And that's, I don't believe men and women are created equal. I don't believe men are created equal. When you look at one person versus another, I like to use Tom Brady as an example. All men are not created like Tom Brady. You know, God bless him. And not all men are created like my husband. Not all women are created like me. And what our military is looking for is the best personnel to fight our nation's wars. And they're looking for competence and merit and the ability to be consistent in a combat zone, how to survive in austere environments. All of those factors never include gender. Like my gender never comes into play when can I lead soldiers through the woods? Can I live in the woods for six months at at a time? Can I carry my rucksack? Like none of those things are gender based. Now, not all women can do it. But as long as the standards remain the same, there's absolutely no reason why people who are qualified and capable and can compete on merit should be held back. Our population is 51% female and we wanna defend our country. So we're gonna put all the weight on just the males, that 49%. We have males who are better at academics. There are males that are better at teaching the next generation, males who are better than all of these other things. And we're going to say, hey, we're only going to take that 49% and make you be combat arms, regardless of where your attributes really lie. So, you know, when I go back to talking about women and being a fully integrated armed services, the focus needs to be on what are we adding to that mission and are we adding in the right way? So if you've got somebody like me who likes to hunt and likes to walk through the woods and likes to lift weights and likes to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I'm 45 years old and I'm still doing those things. I'm probably a better choice for combat arms than somebody who's really, really good at robotics who can add value to our military in a different way. This past year, Lisa released her new book, Delete the Adjective. A Soldier's Adventures and Ranger School. In the book, she challenges the typical labels or adjectives of middle-aged or female that she is given. Instead, she asks the question, if you delete the adjective, who are you? I think a lot of times we let our adjectives define us rather than just describe us. When we let our adjectives define us, we put ourselves in buckets and other people put us in buckets. So the reason why I focused on delete the adjective is I don't want to be a competent female ranger school graduate. I don't want to be a woman warrior. I don't want to be strong for being middle-aged. I don't want any of that. I want to be capable and competent and respected on my merit. And the 22-year-old version of myself should not be doing the same job as the 45-year-old version of myself because my competencies are different. And Being a female impacts that, but it doesn't decide whether or not I'm adding value. So delete the adjective is a subtle way to say, especially in our armed forces, we need to be a merit-based society. And we can go down lots and lots of great rabbit holes on that discussion, but the short version is 
Our military has one goal, and that is to defend our nation and fight our wars. And the best person for the job needs to be the best person for the job, regardless of adjectives. Totally agree. Saw that in the real estate industry. The question that I get asked a lot as a leader of a large real estate organization, and it happens to women that are fairly young and trying to figure their career path out. What advice would you give to women who say, I want to balance my life and still have children and still be a leader? As our households have become dual income, we continue to talk about this thing called work-life balance. And you will always miss something at work and you will always miss something at home. So I think the first thing is let's get rid of that parent guilt and, and figure out what makes us happy. If you want to be super successful in the workforce, then there are going to be times when your spouse has to be the number one parent. And my husband and I have gone through this. I, I deployed in 2018 and my husband had a lot going on. He owns his own financial advising firm. He was in battalion command. He had a lot of stuff going on in his life. And what did we have to do? He had to shift and focus on being a parent because I was gone for my military job for almost a year. And when I came back, I had to back rudder. I had to say, hey, listen, I know I'm back in the States and, and my full-time job is really important, but if I'm going to be okay, I've got to focus on family. So I am going to leave at five o'clock, even if it means I log back in at, at 9 p.m. So what I'd say to these younger people who are coming up that want to have a family, that want to have a career, and that don't want their whole life to be just carpool and the office, like me, still doing jujitsu, still working out regularly. I like to compete in various activities. You have to figure out what makes you happy. But step one is to make sure you find the right partner. And I would say, hands down, bar none, there's no bigger decision you make in your life than who you're going to surround yourself with. Whether it's getting a job close to home so your parents can help you out as you're raising those kids, finding a spouse that's okay with being primary parent some of the time or sharing the household duties. Whatever it is, who, who you choose to surround yourself with will decide your failure is success when you want to do all of these amazing things. And is it possible? Yes. Is it hard? Hell yes. As the world has changed, and I've noticed over the years that the younger generations have a much more balanced approach to gender roles and marriage. In many modern relationships, housework, child rearing, and professional ambition are shared and equally supported. Lisa explains some of the positive ways she has seen this affect her family. My husband's able to own his own business and be a Marine Corps reservist and be an active father who volunteers in the community because sometimes when his schedule swings high, I become primary parent or I become primary whatever while he's primary income. And sometimes that pendulum needs to, to swing back as well. But it is a concept of mutual respect and goes back to the concept where, and I don't want to be preachy, but who you marry impacts the rest of your life. And I think being a single parent, you, you can definitely find the right community using your extended family, using your clubs and organizations, you know, carpool. There's lots of stuff you can do to continue to have that positive influence and, and get some sort of balance in your life. But, you know, having Alan as my husband has been the number one best decision I've made because it's it's given me a lot of leeway in life. What I found is the relationship my husband has with the, our children, because I was deployed, because I was gone at Ranger School and was completely unavailable, I couldn't even send a text message. The relationship he has with our children is so much closer than a lot of fathers that I've seen, definitely in generations past. And there is no negative to a child having a good relationship with a positive male influence in their life. They see how hard he works. They see that he will work all day and then go outside with them and throw the football or hit the volleyball. And I just don't know if they hadn't had that relationship when they were younger, if it would be like that now that they're older, now that my kids are in high school and middle school. The U.S. Army's motto since 1778 is the phrase, this will defend. Lisa has proudly defended her country 
receiving the Bronze Star Medal twice and numerous other commendations for her military service over the years. She is a shining example of the ambition it takes to achieve your goals and the grit required to stay the course. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. We hope Lisa's story inspires you to live your life without limits. If you'd like to keep up to date with Lisa, you can find her at Lisa Jaster on social media. You can also purchase her new book, Delete the Adjective, A Soldier's Adventures in Ranger School, everywhere books are sold. Until next time, remember, everything in life worth having takes a little ambition and grit.